today i am going to discuss about types of constraint motion so welcome to my youtube channel mechanical engineering management so let's start from the first important term what do you mean by constraint motion constraint motion is defined as a motion of mechanical pair which is having definite motion with respect to another element now next term types of constraint motion so basically there are three types of the constraint motion first completely constrained motion second partially or sometimes it is called as successfully constrained motion and third one incompletely constrained motion so let's see one by one all these three types of the constraint motion briefly So let's start from the first completely constrained motion. When the motion between a pair is limited to a definite direction, only one direction, irrespective of the direction of the force applied, then it is said to be a completely constrained motion. And in this case, degree of freedom is one. If you look at this figure, that is only rotate about the x-axis. That means only one rotational motion is possible and that's why it is called as single degree of freedom. Here in case of piston and cylinder, then piston is reciprocating only in the vertical direction. That means having single degree of freedom. In this case, this rectangular bar is reciprocating only in this hole that means only single degree of freedom example a square bar in a square hole so here you can understand this square bar is reciprocating in this direction only so here it is the front view and side view so you can use this figure in the examination the rotational motion is not possible because of it is a square bar and this one is the square hole. So only one translational motion is possible and that's why having single degree of freedom. So in this figure you can say the rotational motion is not possible. Next shaft with a collar at each end here you can see in the circular hole having only one rotational motion is possible. A piston in the cylinder of an IC engine having only one reciprocating motion on the vertical axis. So you can say having single degree of freedom. So for the completely constrained motion, you have to remember the degree of freedom is one and only one. Now next, second one partially or successfully constrained motion. A kinematic pair is said to be a partially or successfully constrained if the relative motion between its links occurs in a definite direction, not by itself, but by some other means. Example, the motion of a shaft in a footstep bearing is successfully constrained motion. So here you can see this is the figure of the footstep bearing. This is the 3D figure of the footstep bearing and this one is the cross section of the footstep bearing and this figure you can use in the examination of the footstep bearing. Once again look at the description. The motion of shaft, this blue color is the shaft in a footstep bearing is successfully constrained motion. Why? Because of as the weight of the shaft and other forces that is generally as a gravitational force act on the shaft in the downward direction in order to permit only rotary motion. And that's why it is called as successfully constrained motion. So due to this load, it cannot move in this vertical direction. So I can say this motion is 
automatically prevented due to this load and that's why it is called as successfully constrained motion only rotational motion is possible and that's why for the successfully constrained motion the degree of freedom is once again 1 next third one incompletely constrained motion when the motion between links of a pair can take place in more than one direction it is said to be incompletely constrained motion so here you can see one translatory motion and one rotational motion that means having two degree of freedom and that's why it is called as incompletely constrained motion so in short we can say if the degree of freedom is more than one then it is called as incompletely constrained motion example circular shaft in a circular hole so here you can see this one is the circular shaft and this is the circular hole so here shaft having translatory motion as well as rotational motion that means having two degree of freedom and that's why it is called as incompletely constrained motion if you want to see more engineering videos then subscribe my youtube channel and go to playlist thanks my dear friends press the like button to appreciate this video